Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome, thanks for joining me. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about how you practice your scales from a rhythmic standpoint. Um, and this is it's gonna go fairly quickly, but I just wanna give you an idea and sort of explain the impetus behind this. Um, of course, it came from a, a discussion on the Blues Guitar Unleashed member forum about playing, uh, in, in the case of the question, it was a Dorian scale. So if you're not familiar with a Dorian scale, I'll show you one really quick. Uh, let's put it on a D. So 10th fret, it's very similar to a minor pentatonic, but with a couple more notes, a two and a six added. So we have the 10th, 12th, and 13th on the sixth, 10 and 12 on the fifth, nine, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 13. And I don't want to make a huge deal out of this right now. Uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to make this a lesson about the Dorian scale. I've done other lessons about that. I want to I want to talk about something that's that's more relevant to the scale itself. And that is when we tend to practice scales, we tend to practice them starting on beat one. Let's say we were playing it in 16th notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Okay, that's gonna kind of make sense unless I do something like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and, and let's say I stop at the 10th fret, which is the D, it's the root, right? So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Well, that's kind of a weird, it's kind of a weird feeling when, when things end where we don't expect them to. You could have something like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and, uh, let's say you played it twice and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E. It kind of, it kind of sounds like not done. It's, it's just kind of an awkward thing. And a lot of times we tend to double the top note. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E. And then what? It's, it's, it's a weird place to end. <laughs> we really want to end, let's say on beat one. Well, so if we're one count past beat one, what if we start the scale a little bit early? Okay, so if we've gone, if, if we're ending on the E of one, one E and a two E and a right, we're ending on the E, that's one too far. We wanted it to end on one. So what if we started for E and a? Uh, what if we started a little bit ahead of the beat? It serves two purposes. One, it's gonna make the scale end at the right point. Now the Dorian scale is a good example of this where the Dorian scale is a mode. So it's, it's without having a D minor chord behind it, it's already gonna, you're already gonna be inclined to sort of keep going down to the C because D minor is the second mode of the C major scale. So you're already, ah, that's just sort of naturally, when you hit that C, you're like, oh, that's where it's supposed to go because that's the that finishes it out, turning it into a major scale. If you have that D minor chord, like if you play it into a looper and have it going on behind the scale, it's going to turn out, that's going to make more sense because you're going to have that sound going on behind it, right? So that's the thing about practicing modes. This is not such a big deal with like blue scales and stuff like that, but I'm, just, I'm going to cover that here in just a second anyway. So 
what I would do if I have 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E. And I end up kind of not in a good place, right? I went one count too far. So what if I started early? 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1. Now it ends up exactly as I want. Okay, so that's one option. Another option is add something like a blue note, right? 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and uh, that didn't really make it any better. In fact, I kind of made it worse. So that's probably not a good idea for right here. But let's say you're not practicing modes. Let's say you're practicing like the pentatonic scale. Um, and let's say you're playing it in eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Like, where do you go from there? Four and we're not at the end of the measure. We're, we're not at the end of our count. It sounds a little awkward, right? So I need, I need one more count. If I want that to end on beat one, I'm, I'm on the end of four. I need one more. Well, I'll just push the whole thing a little bit later. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Right? Now, if you don't double the top root, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Well, now I, that, that didn't necessarily make it any better. Now I'm ending on beat four. Again, I really like this to end on beat one. This is something that you want to kind of get used to. This, this, is, this will also really help your soloing because a lot of times in your soloing, at the end of your line, you want to land on a certain note on beat one of that new chord. That's, that's not an uncommon thing to want to do. In fact, it's a very common thing to want to do. So doing it when you're practicing your scales is sort of setting you up to start thinking this way. Right? And I, I realize this may be a little bit esoteric if you're not big on soloing yet, but it's something that you're going to want to keep in mind. And it's something that if you can sort of start to think about now, it can really help. Aside from that, it may just make your practice, when you're practicing a scale, it may just make it sound better. So if instead of starting on beat one, I start on beat two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Looky there. It lands right on beat one as it ends. Cool. Now, is that the only way to practice scales? No, of course not. There's lots of ways to practice scales. But when you practice your scales, I'm pretty sure you never thought of it this way. Anytime I can get you to look at things in a little bit different light, particularly where rhythm is concerned, I've done a good thing. <laughs> rhythm is what it's all about. Keeping stuff in time, being aware of what beat you're on. A lot of times, you know, I'll hear from students, they'll play a scale, and then they feel like they want to go one more note, or they want to go you know, someplace else. They don't want it to end. And it's really hard to explain that the reason maybe something is, doesn't have a satisfying ending is because of the beat, not because of the note. It's because it's landing on a beat that is awkward, that's, that seems unusual. So push it by a beat, pull it by a beat, half a beat, play around with it, see where it ends now, what beat you're on, and see how many sort of clicks you are off, <laughs> right? And adjust the whole thing by that amount. Then you're gonna get the sound you're looking for, okay? It's gonna land on the one, it's gonna be a satisfying ending. You're doing two things. You're, you know, you're, you're getting your brain, you're getting your ear used to listening for how something's going to end, which is a great skill to learn. The other thing is you're getting your brain used to not starting on beat one, which is another great skill to learn. And even though we're not playing licks, we're just playing a scale, it doesn't matter. That, that, that awareness is gonna carry forward to when you're actually soloing and playing licks, 
Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Try it out for yourself. See if you dig it. If you do, leave me a comment. Leave me a, leave me a message in some way, depending on where you're seeing uh, this video. As always, if you have guitar playing friends that you think would benefit from this, I hope you'll share it with them. I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.